Hey, what's going on? It's South Stratford Post. How you all doing? And welcome to another episode of This Podcast Will Kill You. Back with the mix and sound. What's going on? Today, I would like to talk about Odio Nagalo, if you don't mind. The news that he's going to stay until the end of the season. Now, for me, this shows a lack of ambition from the club, as usual, the lack of ambition from the Glazers. Now, Odio Nagalo staying until the end of... January means that we're not going to bring in any reinforcements and let's not kid ourselves they're not going to bring any more strikers in if Igalo is staying till the end of January so much for the building for the future 31 year old you know from China China the Chinese club Shanghai have really mugged us off here I was all for Igalo staying for the last nine games of the season but for him to stay for half of next season shows a lack of ambition we got Liverpool signing Werner so Liverpool are going like this and we're slowly going down this is the whole point this whole point we're trying to catch a 40 point deficit we're trying to reduce a 40 point deficit now Werner goes to Liverpool and we're signing the Galo what does that do for us as a club as ambition as an ambitious club looking to challenge for the title I don't know what you think about that but that's my opinion Odin Galo is a fantastic role model he's a great guy but for the future he is just not the player that we need for the long-term future and long-term means half of next season meaning that we're not going to bring in anyone else who's younger and possibly better than he is we're going to stick with him until January so two steps forward three steps back it's just not good enough in my opinion it's just not good enough we got now we got Sancho on the radar Sancho is a must signing if we don't sign Sancho it's going to be absolutely bad because we're going to have Igalo as our backup right so if we sign Sancho it might dampen the wound a little bit but do not hold your breath Sancho might not come Sancho might not come he's 20 years old he's got one of the best assist records in Europe the best goal records from his position in Europe he's 20 years old you think he's not going to have competition you think that other teams are not going to be wanting this player this player is possibly the best young player in Europe will we get him if we get him fair enough we don't we're in trouble it's simple as that we need players we do not need one player in one player out we need one player in one player in one player in we do not need all that one player if we sign one player we're not going to sign another player because we got that player but that's how we work that's how glazers work we got a galo so we're not going to sign another striker and that's it that's that's the whole point you need to understand this guys you need to understand this i know a lot of you are very emotional i know a lot of you have your tissues and you'd cry to the titanic and you're very uh you know patronizingly positive on your twitter i know you beg for retweets i know what you shave your hair off i know what you do for retweets and likes and pretend it's for charity this is what people do this is what people do to, you know, gain fame and they don't look at the real side of it. You know, I speak from the heart. I speak as a United fan. I don't speak as someone who wants fame. So that's the point. That's the point I'm making about that, right? Eddie Onagalo, great guy, great guy, but we're not Sentiment FC, right? We're not Sentiment FC. I'm a great guy. If you meet me, I'm a great guy. I buy your pint. I'm a great guy, but I can't play up front for United, can I? Because you won't agree with it. Because I'd be crap. I'm probably scored two goals in 10 years. So you don't want that, do you? So we need to look to the future. And we need to be more like our rivals. And improve. Back in the day when we had Tevez. When we had Ronaldo. When we had Rooney. And we still were after Berbatov. That's ambition. We didn't need them. But we needed to improve. Regardless if we were already champions. And already European champions. That's the levels we got to get at. That's the levels we got to get at, ladies and gentlemen. Idian Agarlo was... Was a, a lucky signing he done well but we did play some relatively average sides the only average side we didn't play was Manchester City but Manchester City are quite openly after the Champions League they're not after the Premier League because they've already won the Premier League so I do not count that Manchester City game as anything other than a decent win without they didn't have De Bruyne blah 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 but the rest of the teams last Lintz and all this these teams we were playing were beatable and we have to look at it realistically we cannot sugarcoat our eyes and put wool over our eyes like the glazers are doing to you and you're all taking it you're rubbing that wool in your eyes you're rubbing it in your eyes so you can't see a thing you're just looking you know looking at the positive fake positivity blah 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 listen be real we're human beings right be real stop being so positive ole i want him to succeed but nothing can hide the fact that we got our worst points tally in 30 in, in the Premier League history, right? Nothing could hide that fact. We had 64 points under David Moyes, right? 
but we had 64 points I, I believe we had 64 points we gotta get 19 points from 20 20 points from 27 to beat david moy's record right this is a league that is very poor it's going to be the lowest points tally in the top four in the history of the premier league the lowest points tally in any other season will be eighth will be ninth right so not to not get top four when Chelsea have had a transfer ban, lost their best player, and Leicester City, who've changed their manager recently, it will be disappointing. That's what I'm saying. Now, would you keep Ole if he didn't get top four? If he got top four and we achieved it, then yeah, I'll keep Ole. I will, I will believe in Ole's movement. But at the moment, we need to be sceptical. We need to open our eyes and we need to be critis critical of our team. We have to be. We have to be. We have to be critical with certain players and all players in general. We have to be critical. Like I was saying last season, I'll, and I've said the season before and the season before, Jesse Lingard is not good enough. Jesse Lingard needs to go. I got slaughtered for that. But Jesse Lingard is not good enough and now it's proven and now all the Jesse Lingard FC guys are disappeared. Gone from the planet of the earth. You cannot find them. Where is Jesse Lingard FC? Where is it? Right? I said in the summer, we needed to sign Bruno Fernandes. I begged United to sign Bruno Fernandes. And they were like, oh, you don't know about Bruno Fernandes. He wouldn't fit in our side. He's not good enough. He plays in the Portuguese league. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like, he plays in the Portuguese league, but his numbers are fantastic. Right? And it would have been better than anything we got right now, which our numbers are zero. Right? Anyone could be zero. I probably can get assist. I probably could get an assist in number 10 position. In, in a year don't you think I would get an assist for Man United in one year Jesse Lingard has been playing an international footballer and has not got an assist or a goal we needed Bruno Fernandes and I told you we needed Bruno Fernandes and we signed Bruno Fernandes because a player got injured and we needed Bruno Fernandes and now look fruits of the labour fruits of our labour we have got Bruno Fernandes and everyone is buttering up his uh, backside now and pretending they were all up for Bruno Fernandes in the summer like I was and like other people was admittedly so now we need Sanchez we need a central midfield we need a center back we need a left back we probably need cover on the right back and we need a right midfielder right this is not an agenda this is what we need for United to succeed and when we start it's not that we're, we're Sheffield United or we're Aston Villa and we we ain't got ambition, right? We have ambition. When Alex Ferguson took over United in the 80s, Manchester United were not successful. Manchester United had not won the league in 20 odd years. So when Alex Ferguson took charge of Man United, we were not elite. When Moyes, when Van Gaal, when, when Mourinho and when Solskjaer took charge of United, we are elite. That's the difference. We are an elite team and we should act like an elite team. Right? This is not the 1980s, okay? It's all different now. Football has changed regardless. We are an elite team and we should act like an elite team. And if we have the resources, we should use our resources. If we have a chance to improve, we should do it. And we should do it quickly. Pereira, Lingard, Jones, Sanchez, go. They have to all go. Rojo, they have to all go. Forget it. Why are they here so long? Why are they earning 100 grand a week? Why is old Jones still here? The guy is a pathetic footballer. He's not even, you know, a top thousand of a footballer. He should be playing in the League One. He should be playing in League One where he belongs. That's where he belongs, guys. So I hope you enjoyed my podcast. Sorry about the slight delay. It's all coming across to my new studio coming really soon. I will have some special guests. I will be making this the best of it can be. You know what I mean? So you will have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Don't work too hard, yeah? Don't work too hard. I'm off to work. Peace, yeah? All the best. <laughs>